The UltraBoost 21 has finally dropped today in all of its different color variants. Of course, I already did a review on the launch colorway, which was probably my favorite, the predominantly all white one. So what we're gonna do today is compare them all. I have the OG or the 1.0. I have the UltraBoost 19. I have the UltraBoost 20. And of course, I have the UltraBoost 21. So what we're gonna do in today's video is compare the OG 19, 20, and 21 and just see which one makes the most sense. One thing before we get started, I just want you guys to see the comparison between the 1.0 and the 21. Exactly how I said, it's like it's based on that design. However, it's just a more futuristic version. So we're gonna be going through some pros, some cons, the good, the bad. And I think where I'm gonna kick this video off is just something a little bit more simple and obviously subjective. And that is which one looks the best. I'm gonna rank these from kind of my least favorite to my favorite strictly based off of how they look. So I'd say my least favorite in terms of the looks of it is the Ultra Boost 20. Now, now look, I know a lot of you guys may like this one. This may be your favorite, but for me personally, this one is just not my favorite in terms of looks. Now my second least favorite has got to be the Ultra Boost 19, just because it looks so similar to the 20. In terms of strictly design, this one is my second least favorite. And the last two, the OG and the 21, right? This is kind of the bigger question, is this the one that still remains the best looking Ultra Boost to date, or has the newcomer come through and taken that place? Now, listen, this is my opinion. In terms of strictly design, which one do I prefer? I'm gonna have to say I prefer the Ultra Boost 21. But now that we've got that one out of the way, I also would like to know what you guys think. Which one looks subjectively the best to you? But we do need to get into some of these specifics. So let's start at the price tag. Which one is the most expensive? Now, pretty much this is very simple. This one is 140 pounds. So this one is the cheapest and the rest are all the same coming in at 100 and 60 pounds. Now, when I am saying this, I do realize that there are a lot of variants of the OG, right? There, this is the 1.0. There is a 2.0, a 3.0, a 4.0, and even now a 5.0. But essentially the, the 0.0 is just the knit pattern. The rest of the shoe predominantly stays the same. Now the construction and the materials actually varies quite a lot from Ultra Boost to Ultra Boost. Now you can kind of see how they've evolved from the 1.0 into the 19, into the 20, and now finally into the 21. But I'd say the most important aspect and what kind of contributes to the Ultra Boost being so incredibly comfortable is the Prime Knit. So on all of these shoes, they all are a one piece sock like fit Prime Knit upper. So one of the most simple things is just how stretchy and how nice do they feel in hand because that definitely contributes to the comfort level. So I wanna start off with the OG, right? You guys have probably felt how stretchy and nice this Prime Knit is, it feels very, very good. Specifically, this 1.0 prime knit pattern is very breathable. You can see a lot of perforation holes in that knit material. It's nice to the touch, very, very stretchy, and you definitely feel that when you're wearing it on foot. Now with the 19, it's a, it's a little bit less stretchy. What I'd say they did here is just make it a little bit more tight so you get a little bit of extra lockdown. Now, you do get a little bit of extra stretch towards this part, of course, to allow your foot to get in there, but it also feels the roughest to hand. So this actual knit material feels pretty rough on foot. And if you are wearing this shoe with invisible socks where the top of your foot is exposed to just the prime knit, you're gonna feel this kind of rough sensation at the top and it's just not that great. Now the 20 goes a step further and is even rougher and less stretchy. This has gotta be almost a solid knit with not that much give to it whatsoever. This is definitely by far the least stretchy prime knit on an Ultra Boost out of this selection right here. Now, what I am glad to say is they completely pulled it back around with the Ultra Boost 21. This is definitely the most stretchy Ultra Boost prime knit out of all of them. Not only that, but it feels the softest. This one is definitely my favorite knit 
out of all of them. Now, Prime Blue. These two do not have Prime Blue. However, the 20 and the 21 do have Prime Blue. So Prime Blue is a brainchild of Adidas and Parley of the Oceans to come together and put some recycled plastics from the ocean into their sneakers in order to kind of have a more eco-friendly approach to making shoes. So the weird thing about this is the 20 doesn't say much or how much recycled plastic is in the knit of this shoe. And then when it comes to the 21, it seems like in terms of marketing, they definitely wanted to make it a little bit more obvious that they were using Prime Blue and all of the benefits of having Prime Blue for the environment. So with the Ultra Boost 21, 50% of the upper is made of textile and 75% of that textile is made from Prime Blue. Right, so let's talk about Boost, the cushioning system. Every single one of these is full length Boost. Starting with the OG, this is the amount of boost that we kind of started the Ultra Boost line with. And then what they did with the Ultra Boost 19 is they added 20% extra boost in this shoe. And then they moved over to the 20, which has the exact same amount as the 19. And then the Ultra Boost 21. It does look like it has a lot more boost, but it in fact only has 6% extra, which I think is fine. Now, another huge thing that I was kind of interested in is with the Ultra Boost 21, they completely redesigned the outsole. If you take a look at the Ultra Boost 1.0, you can see there is the Continental outsole, which has pretty much been the same for quite a long time. You get the circular little nibs on the traction pattern and you get the torsion system in the center. Now, when it comes to the 19 and the 20, these two are exactly the same. Now they do look slightly different in design, but for the most part, they are both continental and it kind of is very, very similar to the original. So not much has changed there. So since we're talking about the outsole and why I'm pretty much speaking on it is here is an ultra boost that I have literally run to the ground. These things are disgusting. I stopped wearing these quite a long time ago, but I did want to show you guys the wearing of the Ultra Boost. So this is the Ultra Boost 3.0. Uh, believe it or not, these used to be white. I want to show you the traction pattern just because it wears down very, very quickly. Now, I would say this wearing started to happen about a year into wearing these. These completely became pretty smooth underneath and they slip on a lot of surfaces. Now I know a lot of other people have experienced this with the original Ultra Boost. I've seen pairs that are even worse than mine and they've completely worn straight through to the boost. So this was something that is very notable with the original. And what I am hoping is that with this redesign, they have made it a little bit more durable, which will last longer. It does also have a brand new torsion system. So the original torsion system kind of sat here and spans towards the back. As you can see, this is part of the torsion system here and essentially it is just a plastic plate that sits here and adds some more stability to the shoe. Now when you see me folding this one it's super easy. I mean Boost is notorious for being soft, squishy and just very kind of movable. That's why it's so comfortable. Now when it comes to the 20 you find it's pretty much the same story however it bends a little bit less just because it has thicker amount of boost but it's pretty much the same. And same goes for the 19. It's very soft here at the top and easily bendable. Now, the new torsion system changes that. You can see this is a lot more springy and that's because they've moved the torsion system to span the entire forefoot, which adds a little bit more springiness. So you can imagine when you're running, you're gonna get a lot more spring from the forefoot. So before we dive straight into which one I think is the most comfortable, which arguably is the most important question when it comes to the Ultra Boost because that's its biggest feature is how awesomely comfortable the Ultra Boost model is. Uh, I do want to talk about sizing. So sizing on these actually does vary a little bit. So my experience is the 1.0. You definitely need to half size up. This is the tightest one for sure, specifically around this point here. I'd say the middle of your foot. You get a lot of squeeze because this is made from a different material. It's not knit. This is a, just a normal kind of shoe fabric. So it definitely doesn't have any stretch to it. And you feel that when you're wearing it. Now, when it comes to the 19 and the 20, these two are pretty similar. They're pretty stretchy over here um, around this entry point. So it's not, e it's not hard to get them on. They are just a slip on and go. However, I will say that the sizing is pretty identical to both of these. 
these. They both fit me true to size. They feel fine on foot. There's nothing that I would say to kind of make you change your size. They're very accessible, so you can try on which one fits you, which one doesn't. The Ultra Boost 21 is pretty much perfect. And this does fit me true to size. So if you are looking to get this shoe, I would recommend just going your true to size that you get with any other Ultra Boost. Now, comfort, which one is the most comfortable? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to arrange it into my opinion, which one I think is the most comfortable and which one I think is the least. Coming in at last place, the least comfortable one out of all of these for myself is the Ultra Boost 20. The Ultra Boost 20 just doesn't have a nice stretchy upper that contributes to that comfort. So for me, this one comes in last. Now, one thing to keep in mind is these are all incredibly comfortable shoes, but if we are just making the decision out of these four, this one does come in last. Second place for the least comfortable is the Ultra Boost 19. Very similar reasoning to the 20. The knit is just not that stretchy. It is also pretty rough. And I do like to wear invisible socks with a lot of these so I can feel the top of my foot just rubbing against that. Also, this tongue piece, what the hell? It rides up so high and I can feel it rubbing against the hair of my ankle and I just don't like that. It does feel pretty damn uncomfortable. I don't like this tag. All right, okay, I think you guys can tell which one's gonna be number one, but let's just go with number two, of course the OG. Now you might think, okay, well, they've obviously, they've got more boost in those. And this is definitely an older technology in terms of a running sneakers. Why is this more comfortable than these two? Again, this comes for preference. This one is just an awesome combination of great stretchy knit and a decent amount of boost. Now, of course, the most comfortable is the Ultra Boost 21. I feel like the combination of this really nice soft knit that is stretchy and of course the huge amount of really nice boost just play, works together amazingly. Because of the roundness over here, I feel like you, you can walk really nicely in these, which again is gonna be the majority of what I'm wearing this for, just walking around for the gym, just general wear and tear. This is going to be an awesome shoe. So I do really like this one and it definitely gets the number one place at the most comfortable Ultra Boost to date. So overall, I do believe that my favorite Ultra Boost has got to be the brand new Ultra Boost 2021. Hey, that pretty much wraps it up for the Ultra Boost, right? We got the OG, the 19, the 20, and of course the brand new 21. Let me know what you think about this video down in the comment section. Thank you so much for coming through, liking, commenting, and of course subscribing. And if you haven't yet, make sure you do subscribe and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next one. But until then, 